Income tax 2023-2024. Lifetime learning credit overview. Get ready and some coffee because we're laying down the facts about income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in publication 970 tax benefits for education tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're at the bottom part of the income tax formula where the credits live. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, it's basically a funny income statement ending not with net income, but rather taxable income. Taxable income, therefore, basically being the bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula, but is only half the story, half the battle, half the formula. Taking then that taxable income, calculating the tax on it, not using a flat tax, mind you, but a progressive tax system to get to the tax before credits and other taxes, other taxes including things such as self-employment tax, if you happen to have a Schedule C business, for example, Credits, the point that we're focused in on here, similar to deductions in that both deductions and credits are good, but if you had a dollar deduction, you would simply have up top in the income statement part of the income tax formula, a reduction to the taxable income, having a benefit based on and dependent upon your income tax bracket. Whereas if you had a dollar credit, if the dollar credit was up here in the non-refundable area and you had enough tax liability to consume it, you might get the full dollar worth of benefit. You can't decrease lower than the liability of taxes, however, if it's up here in the non-refundable portion, because if you did, then we wouldn't have a tax system, but it would be used as a safety net or benefit program that gets us to the total tax then we have tax payments and refundable credits payments including things like w-2 withholdings and estimated payments the refundable credits will take the tax liability below zero resulting in the tax code being used not to collect taxes but as a form of welfare benefit safety net program finally getting to the tax refund or tax due this is going to be the form 1098T, which you will typically get from a financial institution, which will at least indicate whether or not you can look into benefits for paying for education, such as first the credits, first the most beneficial credit, the American Opportunity Credit. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product, because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. If you can't get that, then the lifetime learning credit. If you can't get that, then typically you would look in to see if you can get a deduction for it in some other way, remembering that the 1098T will be an indication, but doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be the exact amount that you're going to be using to calculate in the credits because there are complications, such as the scholarships and whatnot, such as payments for supplies and books and whatnot, which we will get into in a bit more detail shortly. We got the form 8863 education credits where we have the American Opportunity Credit, that's the big one we look at first, and then the Lifetime Learning Credit. This is Schedule 3, Additional Credits and Payments, Part 1, Non-Refundable Credits, Line 3, Education Credits from Form 8863 flowing into here. This is Page 2 of the Form 1040, Credits and uh, Taxes and Credits. 
The credit would then flow into line 20 on page 2 of the Form 1040, amount from Schedule 3. And when you're talking about the American Opportunity Credit, you might have the uh, refundable part, this up top in the non-refundable part down here, possibly the refundable part, line 29, going directly here from the form uh, 8863. Okay, let's go into, can you claim the credit? So we're now looking at the lifetime learning credit. So usually when we're thinking about the lifetime learning credit, it's because we could not get the American Opportunity Credit, the one that's going to be more beneficial, and therefore we're defaulting to the Lifetime Learning Credit, which has a broader array of things that will allow us to qualify for it, but typically will always, basically, I believe pretty much always, be a lesser amount that you will get a benefit for than if you were to be able to qualify for the American Opportunity Credit, making it a logical thought process when thinking about what to do with the taxes for the education expenses, first trying to get the American Opportunity Credit, and if not qualifying, defaulting to the lifetime learning to see if you can pick it up, which is where we are now. So the following rules will help you determine if you are eligible to claim the lifetime learning credit on your tax return. So who can claim the credit? Generally, you can claim the lifetime learning credit if all three of the following requirements are met. So you pay qualified education expenses of higher education. So we're going to have to define this because it might be defined a little bit different than what we had on the American Opportunity Credit. So we have those qualified expenses. You can uh, you pay the education expenses for an eligible student. So once again, we have this eligible student situation, which again, you would basically think would be someone that's on your tax return, you, your spouse, or a dependent, for example. The eligible student is either yourself, your spouse, or a dependent you claim on your tax return. So overview of the lifetime learning credit for 2023. So the maximum credit up to 2000 uh, per return. So now we have per return as opposed to per student. So you can imagine a situation where you have multiple kids, let's say, that are going to school. If they both qualify for the American Opportunity Credit, then possibly you have two American Opportunity Credit calculations that you're doing for two students. But they can't both qualify for just the lifetime learning credit on one tax return because you have up to 2,000 credit per return. You can imagine a situation where one student qualifies possibly for the American Opportunity Credit uh, whereas the other one doesn't and they qualify for a lifetime learning credit in which case you have two calculations for two separate people but you can only have one lifetime learning credit per return so that's the idea so limit on modified adjusted gross income the magi basically same threshold i believe as for the american opportunity credit meaning if your income goes above the 180,000 if married filing jointly or 90,000 if single head of household or qualifying surviving uh, spouse then you're going to be uh, there's going to be a phase out kind of situation you'll lose the credit if your income goes above a certain threshold refundable or non-refundable non-refundable our credit limit to the amount of tax you must pay on your taxable income so in other words the american opportunity credit you will recall had a uh, refundable component to it which means that if your tax liability goes below zero you could still get a benefit from it but lifetime learning credit no which makes kind of sense because you would think that if you're going to higher education after four years or after you no longer qualify for the american opportunity credit then you're not going to get a benefit of of like a like a welfare or safety net kind of program past that point in time which kind of makes sense so in any case number of years of post-secondary education eligible for all years of post-secondary education and for courses that acquire or improve job skills. So we have a broader range here. We don't have that four-year uh, freshman through senior that's determined by the educational institution. You can be a lifetime learner. I just go to school. I'm just a school bum. That's what I do, okay? I just like going to school and I just do it forever. And then, and then so, no, but if you're learning new skills or whatnot, 
obviously lifetime learning can be a, a, a good thing. I try to learn lifetime learning as well, but uh, this is for the credit situation. All right, in any case. So number of tax years credit available. Available for an unlimited number of tax years. So once again, obviously much broader than the American Opportunity Credit, which meant that you had to be in the first four years determined by the school, freshman through senior, in terms of your status by credential or credits typically. And you could only claim it for four years for an individual student on the tax return. Whereas here, we can we can basically claim it for an un, un, unlimited amount of years if we're on post graduate level we're past the senior we're doing master stuff or something like that might still be able to qualify so much broader that's the idea type of program required student doesn't need to be pursuing a program leading to a degree or other a uh, recognized educational credential once again broader than the american opportunity credit which was typically geared towards some types of degree or credential so number of courses uh, available for one or more courses uh, felony drug conviction felony drug convictions don't make the student ineligible so remember with the american opportunity credit because there is a problem with drug dealers hanging out on the campuses these days you know that or at least there there was when i was that was a long time ago but i'm sure there's still a problem with the with the with the, the drugs on the campuses so they tried to limit that with the american opportunity but if you've got the felony drug conviction they didn't put that on the lifetime uh learning thing here so qualified expenses tuition and fees required for enrollment or attendance including amounts required to be paid to the institution for course related books supplies and equipment and then we have the payments for academic periods payments made in 2023 for academic periods beginning in 2023 or beginning in the first three months of 2024 we have the similar kind of cutoff thing we saw with the american opportunity credit notice this qualified expenses might be a little bit more strict than we saw for the american opportunity credit so one more time tuition and fees required for enrollment or attendance including amounts required to be paid for the in paid to the institution for course related book supplies so remember when, when we have this question of some schools are going to say here here's the, the all we're going to say is you got to show up to class and whatnot that's what we're going to provide and then you need to get these supplies such as for example the textbook and then you got to go buy the textbook and you might go to the institution but you could go elsewhere to buy the textbook uh or some institutions might give you all the supplies packaged in the the payment for the tuition as part of the tuition basically payment so so if you're at an institution where you're buying your own supplies your own textbooks and whatnot and it's not part of the the bundle that you're paying directly to the institution it might be with the lifetime learning credit less likely that you pick those up as something that's going to be a qualified expense because you might not be paying those uh, directly to the institution in those cases so that's so we'll have to take a look at that as a possible difference for the lifetime learning obviously the amount that you pay directly to the institution will include at least the enrollment fees uh for for the course but might not include other materials they want you to have for the course like the expensive textbook typically all right so who can't claim the credit you can't claim the lifetime learning credit for 2023 if any of the following apply your filing status is married filing separate so once again if you're married irs is skeptical for you to choose filing separate because they think you're going to take advantage of income limitations and whatnot so you lose some of the ability to take credits in that situation if you make that choice you are listed as a dependent on another person's tax return such as your parents so you might be under 24 still going to school and whatnot and be qualifying to be listed as a dependent on your parents tax return that means someone might get the benefit but it's not going to be you in that case because you're listed as a dependent but possibly your parents could so see who can claim a dependent's expenses later your modified adjusted gross income your magi is ninety thousand or more than one hundred eighty thousand. Uh, or more if filing married filing jointly so if you're a above that threshold 
then you've lost the ability to get the credit because you're doing well is the idea and you don't need for the uh, government to be funding your uh, education at that point would be the idea. So MAGI, modified just gross income, is explained later under effect of my amount of income on the amount of your credit. So you or your spouse were a non-resident alien for any part of 2023 and the non-resident alien didn't elect to be treated as a resident alien for tax purposes. More information on non-resident aliens can be found in publication 519. You claim the American Opportunity Credit, see chapter 2, for the same student in uh, 2023. In other words, you can't claim both the American Opportunity Credit for the same student as well as the lifetime learning credit, it's possible to have one student on one ta on the same tax return claiming the American Opportunity Credit and another student claiming the lifetime learning, however.